What is up, guys? We we got some newer equipment, and we've got some ancient equipment. This is a manufacturing plant. They called to get a second opinion. Um, came up here with the maintenance guy. They want a second opinion on that guy there. It's a pretty old train. Um, I've already got some panels off of it, so let's uh, dig in and see what we can figure out with this thing. So I uh, gave it a once over with him up here. We've got a uh, fairly dirty evaporator coil. Filters are clean. I'm not sure how long it's been since this guy ran, but we're missing part of a filter there. The belt's a little loose, worn, but okay. You can see the dust um, from the manufacturing process on that wheel, but uh, I don't feel any bearing play. Belt moves. You can see the rust lines on that belt where it was sitting in the pulleys. That's a dead giveaway. It hadn't hadn't ran in a while. So it needs a good cleaning. We're gonna obviously get in and check the heat exchanger. Um, all this doesn't look too terribly bad. Somebody's changed an igniter at some point. Um, heat exchanger's probably cracked, but he wasn't given any options. The other company told him, well, you gotta replace too old can't get parts uh, typical typical stuff so we're gonna start by homing out our compressor because our crankcase heater is bad you can see that it, uh, that wire is burnt up there power is off by the way there's your crankcase heater wire um, so we're gonna home out our compressor I've got an acid test we're gonna do an acid test uh, there is uh, currently no thermostat on the wall either. Thermostat's off of the wall, so I'm not sure what the previous company did, but it's got a new contactor in it. So let's dig in, start with our voltage, and then we'll warm our compressor out and see what we can do. At least give them a price to repair versus replace. I have a feeling repair is going to be a pain. So let's start with our voltage coming in. 235 236 234 so that's good let's see yeah there's a blown fuse so it's got a 50 amp fuse that's blown and that was probably because of this compressor that they've disconnected, I would assume. So let's see. Can't home out our compressor. 0.4. This is a three phase compressor. 0.37. five three whatever it's dancing that's not a good reading so I'd say the compressors dead. let's see let's see if we've got any direct shorts if I can find a good ground here hmm let me find a good ground see if it's directly short so I don't have any direct shorts to ground I think I had a bad connection or something because my compressor actually so 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.35, and 0 0.36. So actually it didn't ohm out too terribly bad, so it's probably locked up, would be my guess. Um, we're gonna check our wires make sure we don't have any shorts i didn't have any shorts on the 
terminals themselves. I might throw a fuse in this guy and see if this thing will run. It might be a static if I can get it running for a little bit, but I have a feeling it's locked up, so maybe smack it with a hammer or something, see if that works, right? It's a solution to everything. Other than that, it needs some work. Let's uh, look at the heat exchanger, um, go from there, see, uh, probably ohm out our blower motor too, just make sure it's okay, but it looks all right. It spins freely and all that good stuff. So I have a feeling nothing's gonna be perfect. It never, never usually is, especially on something this old. But let's keep on going, look at heat exchanger and go from there. So before I run down and do all that, I'm gonna get an acid test. We do have some oil, so we got a valve core leaking. Same deal here. I had some oil when I took the cap off, so. That's a negative test. Doesn't smell bad. Refrigerant looks good, so I'm uh I'm good with that. Let's uh go see if we can fire this thing up. So I've got wire nuts for these guys. I threw a spare fuse in there. I can barely see this wire diagram. It's like right here. So we got red is common, blue is start, black is run. So Red's common, blue start, and black run. So we're gonna get those guys connected and tightened. Go ahead and secure these off. The other thing I saw while I was in here is high pressure switch has been bypassed. Uh, you gotta love it. Um, and then we'll bump this guy and see, see what it does. It might just blow up in my face, I don't know. You can see we got a hole right there. Nothing else too crazy. It's rusted. Um, that's keep hitting the button, turning myself off. This seam right here is rusted out. So got some turning veins down in there. Uh, so heat exchanger needs to go. We kind of expected that. Let's uh Put this guy back up and cross our fingers. Let's bump this compressor, see what happens. All right, here goes nothing. Um, just give it a few kicks to wake it up a little bit. Make sure it knows that uh, it needs to run. I did check my wires up here. It is correct as far as one, two, and three. We can try to reverse the rotation. If it doesn't work, um, and see if we can break it free. It's, uh, Rarely works, at least from my experience. So blower runs. And I'm gonna stand back for this one. She's pumping, low amps, 13 amps. He's also probably low on charge. Didn't look too far out of the ordinary. Um, pumping down. Oh well, I forgot I didn't have my damn. Didn't have your blower running, dummy. All right, so we know it runs. Um, these guys just wanted options, so it's still kind of cool out to really check it, but let me get my high side gauge on and uh, jump it out properly now that I know it runs. And then we can kind of go from there. We know we got some issues, but if we can get them through another cooling season, there's gonna be, <clears throat> that's either restricted or, or low on charge. But uh, let's continue on and see what it looks like when it comes. Running.
bulletin, bro. April's going up. I don't know what it's supposed to be. I can't read the tags on it. Obviously, I'm raising my head pressure now just because of the panel being off. I'm about 45 degrees out and I'm probably what does that saturation make me a 95 so air pressure might be up such a pressure down I might want to get my probes and hook onto here just to see but if I had to guess, I'd say maybe it's restricted and overcharged. Got a cold suction line. Cold, cold. see any frost at the orifice so <clears throat> I really wish it was warm out today it'd be a whole lot easier to test this thing let's uh let's grab some probes and see what kind of readings I'm getting nothing here is really going to surprise me uh, Sub cooling is going to be a skewed number. I'm reading discharge pressure. Uh, basically, I want to get a temp drop across my dryer. Try to see the best I can what it's doing make sure there's no issues i mean there's going to be issues is the problem and it's 45 degrees outside so i'm not going to be accurate on really anything i'm reading but um, like i told them you know it, it may need a shot of refrigerant it may need this it may need that but for right now i got it running um, we may need to come back when it's warmer out to check things see where we're at as far as it goes right now, it doesn't look awful. It would help if I get on the right refrigerant. Pro R22. I mean, you can see I'm in my green marks. Superheat's a little low, but like I said, that suction line felt cold, cold to me. But again, this thing's not designed to run when it's this cold outside. And if my if what I suspect is correct, that there's been overcharged because of a restriction somewhere, um, it actually, I'm not seeing frost over here or anything, but it's very possible that that's happened. And that will cause your low superheat because we're shoving that refrigerant through those uh, orifices and it's trying to feed it back. Restricted or not, You'll get that low superheat being overcharged. Let's do this. So, liquid line's 59. 60. Let's get it across our dryer. So, my dryer's not restricted. So, that's a good sign. good thing is they know what they got here they're not expecting perfect they'd like to get another year out of it if they can get through this summer they'd be happy but it's all looking reasonable for my 
temperature right now. The subcooling, like I said, it may be overcharged. I don't know. Obviously, you've seen what they did and told them they had to have a new unit. No ifs, ands, or buts to shut the damn disconnect off. So, I don't know what's been done to this thing. It's obviously got some age on it. And there's a whole, not, whole lot not right, but we're going to write it up as such. And... Uh, you know, think another year out of a great. Uh, I made, I made a relationship today. This is not. Uh, it's, it's about customer service. It's not about making everything perfect all the time. But they called us for a second opinion. I made it work, and they've got something now. I didn't leave them with nothing, and I'm going to leave them with options too. Okay, this is what it's going to take to make it right. You need a heat exchanger. We probably need to pull the charge, weigh it back in, make sure it's the right refrigerant, it's the right, uh, the, the exact charge on it. Um, I can't read much on the tag. I know y'all probably can't see that. It's a 090, so it's a five ton. But I'm not terribly concerned about any of these numbers. I, it, it's not going to matter. Uh, they, they're going to run this thing till it dies anyways, and they're going to have to make a decision. But uh, we're going to write it all up, let them know what they got. We'll give them some options, repair versus replace. Maybe they get through the summer. They're going to come back and replace all three fuses. I've already talked to them about that. And they're going to come up and give it a once over when it's warmer out. And uh, just make sure nothing's freezing up and everything seems normal. Obviously, we've got some hail damage. I'm pulling, actually, I'm getting heat. I'm getting heat out of that condenser right now. And I'm running 200 on my head. It's 100 and, 102 saturation temperature on my condenser. So 102 condensing temp. It is literally 45 degrees out right now. That's telling me this thing's probably overcharged. Because that's a bit high. I'd like to see this thing when it was 80 or so. And I told him that. And they may have us come back and look at it, you know, when it warms up. Uh, especially if there's an issue. But uh, at this point, we're just, like I said, trying to get a little more life out of this thing. Give them some options. I'm in heat pump heating mode in the right mode. I don't think it's going to matter for my readings. Now everything changed. It's like I don't even know what I'm doing. change to piston package unit come on that's not going to change anything but you can see my head pressure range changed <clears throat> so I mean measure quicks telling me my my head pressure is up as well I'm missing supply and return temp and it says system may be overcharged with the refrigerant what do you know that's what I said measure quick uh, so we're gonna write it all up like that uh, we revived at least for a little while another old train uh, i'm not going to do too much more work on this uh, uh it, it's it is what it is man this is this is commercial hvac it's making things run when it's not perfect that compressor might die at any minute they're not getting any guarantees on this and he knows that we had this conversation he knows what he's got we let him know what he's got we're gonna write it all up just like everything we've seen so leave me a comment guys leave the trade better than you found it see you guys next time